In this video, you'll learn how to write Lewis dot structures for atoms. So we have the periodic table, which is a list of all the different atoms, the different elements that exist. So we want to learn how to write Lewis dot structures. The key to doing that is knowing how many valence electrons each one of the atoms we're talking about has. You can see we have group 1 here. It's called 1A and also called just group 1. That has one valence electron. So all of these elements here, all these will have one valence electron. So let's write the Lewis structure for hydrogen. We'd write hydrogen and we'd put one valence electron there. That's the Lewis structure for hydrogen. And all of these will look the same way. Potassium, that has one valence electron. Of course, overall it has more electrons, but the valence electrons, those are ones in the highest energy level. Kind of think about it as the outer shell. So we could even write francium here, sometimes called francium. That has one valence electron because all these are in group one. Let's take a look at group two. For group two here, you might expect it to be two valence electrons, and that would be correct. If you look at all of these, when we write the Lewis structure, say for beryllium here, BE, two valence electrons. I like to write them both on this side. It kind of represents how they fill their orbitals. Some people like to write them a little differently, like this. Either way is really correct. We're just trying to show that beryllium has two valence electrons. Let's take a look at one more, calcium. So calcium is in group two here, two valence electrons. We'll put them right here. So that's group two. We'll skip over the transition metals. In general, we don't write Lewis structures for these atoms here, for these transition metals, as they have a little bit more complicated electronic structure. We'll go to group three. Now this is sometimes called 13, here it's written 3A, three valence electrons. So if we have boron, one, two, three. And again, it may be written differently. Some people do spread them out. Aluminum, three valence electrons, one, two, three. Note that groups three through six, we really kind of focus on these atoms up here. These are the ones you'll see most in chemistry. When we get down here, these are some of the near transition metals and they're more complicated. These are the ones that you'll see though in your chemistry class. Let's go on to group four, also called group 14. Not surprisingly, something like carbon, one, two, three, four valence electrons. Now carbon's kind of interesting. Often you write it like this because you wanna show that carbon, because it forms these covalent bonds, can form these four bonds here. But again, either way is correct. Silicon, that's the same thing. In group five, we have five valence electrons. Group six, six valence electrons. And then in group seven, these have seven valence electrons. Group 8A, also called group 18, we need to be a little bit careful here because helium, it only has two electrons, two total electrons in the helium atom. So if we write helium, we can't put eight valence electrons around it, there are only two. So we would just write helium like this. That's also because if you think about the electronic structure of helium, we have one S two. If we added more electrons, we'd have the next energy level, the second energy level, we'd start with two S. But since helium only has two, we have the one S two. Those are the two valence electrons for helium. And you can see now why I write two together on this side, because we have this first energy level here for helium. The other elements in group 18, they have eight valence electrons. So one, two, six, seven, eight. Make that one a little firmer there. So elements in group 18, 8A, they'll have eight valence electrons. So that's how we draw Lewis dot structures for atoms. If you're interested in drawing Lewis dot structures for molecules, there'll be a link at the end of this video. This is Dr. B, and thanks for watching.